Hello guys and welcome back for another video. Dom here and on this video I'm going to answer a question that keeps coming up over and over by you guys in the comments, on Instagram and on emails I receive. And this is which controllers I use for my Cubase workflow in my studio day in, day out. But before we get into this, I want you guys to ask me your questions in the comments down below. It can be anything about gear, music, plugins, whatever you want to ask about my workflow, my favorite plugins, or anything else you'd like to know about the way I work, the way I make music. Just leave your comments down below, and when I have enough questions, I'm going to do a video answering them. Let's talk with each other, and let's start a discussion. So, I'm waiting for your questions. Now let's jump into Cubase, and I'm going to show you which controllers I use pretty much every day of my life. Okay, so the first controller I want to talk about, and it's the controller that I've been using for ages with Cubase, like literally since it came out, I can't remember when it was, but it was like almost, I don't know, I, I, I can say like 10 years ago, maybe, maybe more than 10 years ago. Anyway, this is the one, it's the CC121, this is one of the best controllers for Cubase in my opinion, even to this day, I bought it when it came out. It was very expensive, very pricey, but there was a good reason for it. And I'm going to explain to you why I use this to this day. Let me also say that I've tried pretty much every controller that is out there. Apart from some controllers that are not designed to work with Cubase very well, and there are known problems, I didn't bother with those, you know, but I've tried most of the very popular controllers. This is the controller that I go back every single day. And let me explain why. The reason is because number one, it's all metal construction, it's made in Japan, it's not cheaply made, that's why it's expensive, so it has lasted me for a long, long time. Second, it has one single fader, but this single fader is really, really good. It's actually one of the faders that Yamaha used to use on their high-end digital mixers, and it feels really, really nice. See, it's really smooth. And let me, let me move this from Cubase. It's actually really quiet. It's one of the most quiet controllers that I've tried. Um, I mean, if you want to get something quieter than this, you have to spend like a lot, a lot of money. You know, if you want to go for something like the Nuage or something like this. But one fader and you can do pretty much everything that you need in Cubase. There's zero learning curve. I bet if you get one of these, you will learn to use it in like one day. And that's the biggest problem with most controllers. They have a big learning curve. It's it's always challenging to learn new controllers because by the time you learn, you, you end up doing things with your mouse. That's not the case with the CC one to one because everything is what it says on the name. It's one to one. So you have your mute, you have your solo, you have your write automation, your read automation. You can open your channel settings. That's a big thing for me. I do it all the time, record enable, um, your monitoring button, big one, you can open your VST instruments with this button, that's extremely useful, and then you can scroll through channels like this. Now, another big thing with this controller is that if I select, see, I am in this project right here that this is actually the project of the track that I released recently that I did the video. I will link it right here if you want to watch it. Um, but basically, let's say I am on channel one. OK, my intro drone right there. And then let's say I hit channel uh, 51. OK, and check what happens. Boom, it updates. That's big. Not many controllers can do that. And this it works always seamlessly. And especially when you have a controller with banks, for me, that's a big thing if the controller can actually update the banks and I don't have to go, you know, multiple times, scroll, scroll, scroll to get to the channel that I'm looking for. Now, what else? We have the EQ, so I can activate my EQ like this. So you can see I'm, a, I'm, I'm controlling one channel per time, but I have everything that I need on this channel. Um, of course, you have the transport, you can have your cycle, you can uh, play, you can record, go back and forth. 
all these things and you can actually click on these two buttons and you can activate your sound effects as well which is pretty cool so let's say i want to change the eq for this one i can activate i can do all these nice things gain and it works pretty pretty nice it works as you would expect it to work there are no surprises it cannot do everything uh, but there are no surprises. What you see is what you get, and that's the beauty of it. Now, what I absolutely love about this controller is this little button and encoder right here. Of course, we have the panning as well there. So, this is actually what sold me on this when I bought it back in the day. This one can activate and deactivate your metronome, which is pretty cool, but, you know, you have a shortcut for this on your keyboard as well. Now, what I like about this is that you can change the level of your metronome. This is one of the things that you are getting asked to do all the time when you're recording an artist. Even when you're recording yourself, you might want to turn up the metronome volume or turn it down. And with this one, actually, let me go to the end and I'm going to play. So I can activate the click level. It's these little things that make me so excited about this controller and that's why I'm never getting rid of it. Uh, now what else? We have this guy. Now this is the AI knob. This is very, very cool because what you can do is you can say I want to open a plugin for example and I want to control my filter for example on this uh, plugin alliance SSL emulation. So when I hover the mouse, see, I can do all these things and it's great um, and if I want to I can say lock this parameter and now I can move the mouse wherever I want but this is still locked there so sometimes I assign this to the control room volume so that I have basically uh, the control room level right here and it's always fixed there and of course if you would want to use it as a jog wheel you can still go jog or you can click and hold and you can change mode of the jog wheel it could be jog it could be shuttle it could be scrub all these nice things and the other thing that you can do is you can assign things to these four buttons so on button number one i have my mixer number two i have my control room mixer number three i have my video because i do a lot of video work i do music for films for tv uh, for promos and number four i have my ab so i can compare my mixes to a reference track or something like that using the trick that I have shown you on a previous video I'm gonna link it right here so this is the first one this is a CC one to one um, I just love it as you can probably tell this would be my desert island controller for Cubase now let's move on to the second one now the next controller that I use all the time with Cubase is the soft tube console one this one right here and this is a brilliant controller i mean the soft tube console one does so many more things than just being a controller for cubase this basically gives you a real hardware feeling of an ssl console and not only that you can basically use it with many many different plugins i think i'm gonna do a video on the console one at some point let me know in the comments down below if you want to see that the great thing with console one again is what i like about the cc one to one as well is that it's so immediate you don't have to learn it i literally was at home with it in a few hours it's really that easy and i think it's totally worth it if you want to have a very nice sounding SSL console sound into your DAW. So this is exactly what it does and it works perfectly in Cubase. It really works as simple as that. You can select your tracks like this. So I can say I want to select, uh, let's say track 12. I can go like that and I can immediately see what's going on on the screen. Now, of course, if you don't want to see the interface, you can still deactivate it and you can work exactly like you could work on an analog console so you don't see the interface if that's distracting for you. For me, 
I don't mind it actually, sometimes I find it really useful. So for example, if I want to select my channel uh, that contains uh, my whatever OB6 intro, I can select that channel and then I can activate my EQ and start dialing in the parameters maybe i want to assign my compressor like this and if you've worked on an ssl console then this is going to be very easy to get the grasp of and uh, if you want you can change the low cut filter uh, the high cut filter you have the uh, gates you have envelope shapers and then you can even go and change all the controls and maybe you want to change the plugins so maybe you want to have a different kind of compressor maybe you want to have an api eq with an ssl compressor and uh, or maybe a tube tech eq with uh, with an 1176 style compressor all these things are possible because this can control pretty much all the plugins from SoftTube and I think they also control UAD plugins but I don't have those um, and of course if you want to change see if I change the level of my channel you can see that the CC121 updates the fader so this combo actually is extremely powerful and it works really really well so these two guys I love them. They speed up my workflow, they make me more creative, they make me uh, get to the sound that I want really, really quickly. Now, you have to keep in mind that the soft tube doesn't have play and start buttons, it doesn't have the cycle buttons, it doesn't do pretty much a lot of things when it comes to controlling your Cubase operations, but that's not the purpose. That's why if you pair it with a CC1 to 1, you have an amazing combination. So, CC1 T1, SoftTube Console 1, and I'm going to show you a controller that I've been using only for a few days, and I'm really excited about because it's... Um, I'll show you. Let's, let me show you. So, this is the third controller that I'm using lately, and I'm really, really liking it. This is the Loop Deck CT. This is a company that makes controllers primarily for Photoshop, for Final Cut Pro, uh, Premiere Pro, Lightroom. They're really targeting professionals, but mostly, um, you know, photographers, videographers. And actually, I've been using the Loop Deck CT to control my non-linear editor when I'm doing videos and when I'm editing photos because I'm doing a lot of video productions and I'm editing a lot of photos as well. So a week ago Loop Deck released an update, a big update that now supports Cubase and I was so excited about this because to be honest with you when I bought this, this is not a cheap device by the way, so um, it's quite pricey, but for my workflow when I'm doing videos, this helps me a lot. But that was one of the things that I saw straight away, that this had so much potential and for Cubase it would be incredible. And Loop Deck, they did it. They released the update and now it supports Cubase. So now, here's what you can do with Cubase and this controller. As you can see, you have quite a few workspaces. These, these buttons are your workspaces. Again, I'm not gonna go into too much depth because if you're interested, let me know in the comments down below and I'm gonna do a dedicated video. But uh, basically you have your different workspaces where you can have different options. So these are all touch sensitive, touch screen. So there are quite a few presets, uh, but I've created my own workspace because I have a very specific workflow and I want to have my favorite commands at hand. So this is my personal workspace, number four, which is DOM. And now I can say, okay, I want to zoom. Okay, I click on that and I can zoom inside Cubase. See that? Or maybe I want to move my transport like this. So this is also very cool. Uh, I can even press play and stop and all these things. I mean, these are very, very easy things to do. I can move up and down with my tracks like this. But now the coolest thing is that I have quite a few options right here. So I have my channel settings on this button, hardware button. I 
I can customize it exactly how I want. So I want these things that I use all the time to be on a tactile hardware button. So this gives me this option. Seven is my instrument track and uh, the and six is my mixer. And the great thing is I can say, okay, I want to create an audio channel and create an instrument channel like this. Create an effects channel. Create a bus. And I've done quite a few things. Of course, I have the different zoom parameters like this. So I can use my zoom to change my waveform resolution and all these things. So I'm still looking into this. If you're interested and you want to see a video, let me know and I'm going to make a video for this device as well. I'm still testing it, but I really enjoy the fact that I can have all these different commands right here. And the great thing is because Cubase allows you to have macros and create your own commands. This can be like a very cool way to have all of them at the touch of a button. So there you go, guys. In a nutshell, these are the controllers that I currently use for my Cubase workflow day in, day out. Another controller that I'm really looking forward to trying out is the SoftTube Console One Fader. So when I get my hands on one of these, I'm going to let you know what I think about it for sure. Don't forget to ask me your questions in the comments down below. I'm really looking forward to this. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and make me a favor. Hit that bell notification icon and select all for the notifications. The YouTube algorithm tells me that many of you guys miss my new videos because this thing is not selected. So if you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, do that as well. It will really help me make even more cool content for you guys. Until next time, have loads of fun, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.